When we say that demand for a good is relatively price elastic, we mean that consumers are fairly sensitive to price changes, adjusting the quantity they demand of a good by a large percentage relative to a small change in prices. Economists typically represent relatively price elastic demand with a fairly flat demand curve indicating that over a relatively small range of prices along the vertical axis, consumers adjust their consumption of the good by a relatively large amount along the horizontal axis. Once again, the imposition of the tax on the demand side of the market is represented by an inward shift of the demand curve by $3 at all points along the curve. The new demand curve in the taxed market intersects the supply curve here, indicating a decreased level of output. The sensitivity of consumers to the tax-induced price increase means that they sharply reduce their consumption from 6 in the market without the tax to 3 in the market with the tax. Once again, we observe the two new effective price points. The effective price confronted by consumers, PC, $8.50 in this example, and the effective price realized by sellers, P subscript S, which is $5.50 here. The difference between P subscript C and P subscript S once again is three dollars, the amount of the tax. But look at what happens to tax revenue to government. It is reduced significantly as a result of consumers curtailing their consumption. In this example, the tax revenue to government is only nine dollars. The amount of the tax per unit times the quantity, three dollars times three, is nine dollars. The economic burden of the tax borne by consumers is very small when demand is price elastic. Here it is eight dollars fifty cents or uh, the price effectively realized by consumers minus the, pro the equilibrium price of $8, or $0.50, cents, times the quantity in the tax market, which is 3 or $1.50. The portion of the economic burden borne by sellers is larger, indicated by the equilibrium price of $8 minus the price realized by sellers, $5.50, or $2.50 times the quantity in the tax market of 3 equals $7.50. So of the $9 total taxes, sellers are clearly bearing a much larger portion of the tax. To state that more succinctly, we see that when demand is relatively elastic, consumers reduce their consumption sharply, which causes sellers to effectively lower their prices in the face of an excise tax in order to maintain sales, therefore absorbing most of the economic costs. Consider the likely effects of an excise tax on bottled water. What do you suppose consumers would do if they faced a significant price increase as the result of an excise tax? It seems likely that they would find alternatives to bottled water. Perhaps they'd carry an empty bottle with them and refill it at a water fountain. So if sellers of bottled water want to continue to sell it, sell their product, what will they be forced to do? probably lower their prices to mitigate the effects, the price effects of the tax. 
sellers are almost certainly going to bear the brunt of the economic burden of an excise tax on bottled water. Why? Because consumers are very sensitive to price changes. Now, if government has the choice of imposing an excise tax on a good for which demand is price inelastic or on a good for which demand is price elastic, which do you suppose it will choose? Why? If it's a choice between an excise tax on cigarettes, for example, or an excise tax on bottled water, which will be taxed? Probably cigarettes, right? Why? Is it because government wants to encourage people to stop smoking and to drink bottled water? If you ever hear a politician claim that government should raise the tax on cigarettes to encourage people to quit smoking, he is either a liar or an earnest but naive do-gooder who doesn't really understand that the demand for cigarettes is very price inelastic. A more likely reason that government imposes excise taxes on cigarettes rather than on bottled water is that cigarettes generate a much more stable source of revenue for government than bottled water ever would.